Hey guys, Moan Pobear here and today I'm going to talk to you about what, in my opinion, are the perfect, uh, I guess what is the perfect size of business for you to buy. So let's get to it. And yeah, remember, if you didn't yet, subscribe to the channel, comment below, let me know what you think, share with friends. And yeah, I love the feedback I'm getting, so keep sending me those emails, let me know what you like, what you hate. I'm, I'm trying to improve it. So far, I'm just, yeah, here documenting my journey. So I, I hope you enjoy those videos. And yeah, I know many of you keep emailing me about how they can partner with me and learn from me. So see in the description below, people, there is an option to watch our back while we do deals and learn the process. Or if you want to invest passively, there's an option to do that as well. So just see the description below and, and get in touch. So let's get to today's video. So what is the perfect size of business to buy? Obviously, it really depends on how much money you have in your bank, which obviously depends on your age, what you do for a living. If you have 10, 20 million of dollars sitting in your bank account and you're looking to invest in, then obviously you can do much bigger deals. The more money you have, the more bigger deals you can do. I think the perfect size of businesses to go to are businesses doing between one to 10 million a year in sales and revenues, yearly revenues. Um, you can go for, Let's say the bare minimum of business I look for is a business doing 500,000 a year in revenues and I'm going to expand on that in a bit. Why, why this is the type side of business we want to? So first of all, the small businesses are usually, we can just buy them at a cheaper price. If you're going to look for bigger businesses, usually we're going to talk at much higher multiples to buy those businesses. For the type of businesses I'm talking to, we can usually buy those businesses from anywhere between two to five times multiples their EBITDA, their pre-tax profit basically. Bigger businesses, we can talk about higher multiples. And I guess the second reason is that we want to buy a business that will actually reward you financially. So if you go for businesses doing less than half a million a year in sales, you're probably not going to be re rewarded financially that much. So let's assume that a business doing, let's say, one million in sales, probably doing around 100, 200,000 in, in profit. So you want to make sure you have at least that when you work so hard to buy a business after you buy it, you want to at least be rewarded financially. I guess also the problem with bigger businesses is just the fact that you're competing with many times large private equity firms or just trade buyers like big businesses and you don't want to get to a point where you're competing with them on price. They have access to so much capital and in my opinion, it's just not worth it. I'd rather go and buy 10 businesses doing 1 million a year than compete against one business doing 10, 15 million a year in sales and pay just ridiculous prices that in my opinion are not worth it unless you have an existing business in that sector. And then obviously you can use cross-selling opportunities, synergies, and obviously you have the upside from paying so much on a business. Another reason that I think it's going to be hard for you, if, especially if you're doing your first deal or two or just few deals, it's going to be hard for you to raise that amount of capital to buy those bigger businesses because let's say, I'm assuming, obviously it depends on the deal, many times you don't even need equity capital, but let's say, assuming that you might need some equity capital, it's going to be much harder to raise equity capital on deals doing, on businesses doing above 10 million a year in sales. Let's assume, let's give an example that you need like 30% equity to close a deal. On bigger businesses, it's going to be much harder. On smaller deals, you probably want me to raise more than a million dollar which is doable for people who just start in this space. You can literally just go for 10 people, raise 100,000 from each. It's not an easy process, obviously, but it's going to be much easier than trying to raise $10 million for your first deal. And just in general, yeah, if, if your network is pretty small, you're not really familiar with the space, you don't have a track record to raise more than a million dollars, it's probably going to be a pretty def difficult challenge for you to begin with. Another reason that I think those are the, this is the perfect size of type of businesses to go to is that for bigger businesses, just the terms are going to be much harder to negotiate. With bigger businesses, most of the time, the owner just care about the cash that is getting on that business. With smaller businesses, businesses doing between one to 10, many times there's a lot more involved in the deal. Many times people want to sell their businesses for reasons that are not just money. That's why based on the terms that you negotiate, it's going to be much easier for you to negotiate a better deal where you deferred a large chunk of the um, acquisition cost over a period of time versus with a bigger deal, all they care is just someone who paid them the most amount of money, ideally right now. Another reason that I think this is the perfect size of businesses is just management. If you don't have any experience, it's going to be really hard to manage business with hundreds of employees, like big businesses. With this type of business, um, like one to 10, it just many times the owner want to stay as the day-to-day -day manager and basically until he's retiring. Uh, many times the number two person in that business can pretty much take over that business uh, just because it's pretty simple. He's already pretty much doing it. 
So in my opinion, just make things much more smooth when you look into those type of businesses. And obviously all those things are uh, things you can do before buying those businesses. Just do your due diligence, make sure you have someone to run this business for you. Obviously you wanna buy a business, you wanna have a plan in your mind what you're gonna do with it. Do you have maybe people you know you can bring in to run those businesses for you? You want to understand before you get into a business that the owner is not crucial to that business, that if the owner is leaving, there's actually still a business. That's why businesses doing below half a million usually are just the owner. It's basically just the owner owning the business. And if there's no owner, there's no business. So you want to make sure that's not the case. And people buy the product or the service because of the business and not because of that owner. And just in general, like I said, if you got going to buy a small business, you're basically buying a job, you're not buying a business. That's why you want at least, at least bare minimum to look at deals doing half a million a year. Otherwise, you're not buying yourself a business, you're buying a job where you need to be there day to day, um, just saying that, hey, I'm a boss, I own a business, but you'll probably need to be there because there's just not ca enough capital to work with to hire someone else. Or like I said, it's just too dependent on the owner. And if the owner is going to leave the business, there's just nothing to do with that business. There's just literally no business. Like I know the story of um, a business owner who wanted to sell his business, but his main customer was uh, a big company. It was Google was his main customer. And they were basically responsible for 80% of their revenues, of that business revenue. The only reason that Google worked with that business is that owner. And when the owner is going to sell that business, I mean, Google won't continue to work with that business. So there's just literally no business. It's basically a freelancer acting as if you own a business. That's why, in my opinion, I, I remember her listening to that business, I mean, hearing about that business and I'm just like, no way anyone's gonna buy that business because after that person's gonna leave, the, the, the main client is gonna leave as well, like, obviously. And I, I think that's a good lesson for you if you're a, an existing business owner who's running the day-to-day. -day. Try to detach yourself as much as possible from your day-to-day -day because if you're there day-to-day -day responsible for everything, responsible for the relationships with the suppliers, with the customers, you're like literally the main thing in that business. Um, you don't really have a business. It's going to be really hard to sell that business eventually if you want. That's why really try to detach yourself, get to a point where you have systems in place, where you have people who run those things for you. Otherwise, you're just a freelancer who maybe earn a bit more. And yeah, it's not a real business that's running without you. That's, that's basically a business, something that's running if you're there or not and bringing in constant um, money in. Yeah, so to summarize, if you're looking into businesses, make sure you're looking into businesses where the owner isn't the main essential role to run that business. Um, that's why I think businesses doing ideally one to 10 million a year in sales are the best. You're not competing against big companies and competing just for price. You can work on the basically people who care many times about their clients, their brand recognition, the, 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 the everything that they built. It's pretty much their baby at that, that stage. When it's bigger companies, they don't care about it. They mostly just care about the money they can get from it. And that's why I think one to 10 are the ideal sizes of businesses you want to look into. Um, like I said, bigger businesses, you probably need to raise a lot of equity capital, which if it's your first or second deal, it's going to be really hard for you to raise more than a million. Uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much summarized why, why I think this is the best size of businesses to look into. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe and comment below and let me know what you think and hit the notification button so you won't miss any future videos. Yeah, hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you soon.